so many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of Newton's law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and the chain. You gotta be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Dorenda Cassie. And we're excited to share with you the other side of faith today. So many times people are looking why things aren't working, Gary. And they're oh, like, so they're often, struggling. So often. so often Christians say, Pastor, why isn't this happening? What we know, I'm, I know the word of God. A lot of times, Dorenda, it's the natural side that you mix with your faith that they miss. And today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're going to dive into that topic and help people maybe see the missing little link yes. that will cause the kingdom to manifest in their life. Yes. Where does your responsibility start and stop and where does God's pick up at? Good so question. many times those lines are blurred That's good in point, believers' yeah. minds. Sometimes they get in one side of the ditch, it's all going to be God. They get in the other side of the ditch or I've got to do it all and they toil and they're they hurt their life and their health trying to work a workaholic, basically. Yeah. So where do you come in the middle to meet God where you see faith work and faith with works and you see the kingdom come to manifest in your life? That's what we're talking about today. That's right. You did an incredible teaching on that. And yep. we're going to go to that right now. So we're talking about our series called Other Side of Faith. What does that mean, right? The Other Side of Faith. Well, it's talking about your responsibility. You and God are doing things together. So we're going to talk about that. It gets a little personal. I don't mean to, in, you know, meddle with your life, but I'm just warning you right now. I just, you know, because we need to be meddled with. We, gotta have, we, we need the Word of God to mess with us sometimes, right? Yes. Say yes. yes. I need that. and You do. Well, you know, as an example, back in the early days of the church, we had a young lady get, you know, saved, and she was coming to church, and she'd come, you know, at the end of service, we always had prayer for people, and they come up, and so she came up and prayed for her, and demons began to manifest, so we cast those out and set her free, and well, the next week, she's there again. Same demons manifest, cast those out, set her free. Next week, same thing happened. Next week, and finally, we say, something's not right here. So we asked her, I said, what, 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 are you, what are you doing during the week? She says, well, I'm a, a strip club dancer. I said, well, what, what, do you, what do you see for your life? Well, my goal is to be a porn star. We need to talk. <laughs> you, you're going to have to change something here. These demons are, you know, they're, they're, they're just coming right back. So it doesn't matter how much you attend church. It's what you do with what you're learning in church. Okay, you got that? that that'll, that'll save you a lot of trouble right there. You know, here, let me give you an example. And again, as I go through this, uh, I'm going to go through some things as an example. If it speaks to you, that's fine. But as a pastor, we get this question quite, well, here are this comment. Maybe you have too. I don't understand. You know, uh, my child, I mean, he, he's, he's, you know, he's rebelling and I'm having trouble with my kids and here and I mean, he's been raised in church. He knows better. He knows what to do, but he's, you know, he's been raised his whole life in church. I don't understand. You ever heard a parent say that? Come on. You ever heard a parent say that? Yeah. As your pastor, can I help you understand? Okay. But I'm using this as an example of the part you play in this whole equation. Because Christians have this concept that if God's involved, he just does it all and you just sit back. That's not how it works, right? So, for instance, and again... There's no condemnation in Christ, but uh, just understand that. But, you know, I want to help you avoid problems. So let's just talk about this one. So if, you're, if your child's rebelling and, and he's been raised in church, we have to be able to identify. We've got to try to figure out what's going on here. So let's do that. It could be Proverbs chapter 23, 13. It says, do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they'll not die. I mean, discipline, I'm not talking about being abusive. I'm not talking about doing something stupid. I'm just saying that the Bible says discipline is necessary, right? Say yes. I didn't write the book. 
you know, if you don't agree with it, talk to God about it. I mean, I'm reading his word, so. So maybe, you know, well, you know, how many have seen, and again, I, I, I'm just going to say stuff today, and so, you know, you just have to go with it. You just have to go with it, okay? So, you know, how many have heard this, like, you know, the kid's throwing a temper tantrum, and the mom says, well, he's just hungry. He's just tired. Like, we don't have to obey God if we're tired and hungry, right? It's like, no, it doesn't matter how we feel. We, obey, you don't, we don't put up with that. You obey God no matter how you feel, right? And so discipline is necessary, I remember Tim, our son, he's up here leading guitar. He was about three in my parents' house, kind of the driveways at the bottom of, a, of two hills. And we're talking, and where's Tim at? So I look out in the yard, and there is Tim. He's walking towards the road. He's about five feet from the road, and a truck is coming over the hill. There's also a bridge embankment right there next to the driveway, so you would not be able to see him because of that cement embankment, and he's about ready to walk out there. I knew I had one chance to stop him. I said, Tim, stop! He kind of stopped, looked around, whew, and he stopped. But on the contrary, I may have been in the store and heard this kid throwing a temper tantrum. You hear the one, two, There's this big gap. You know, you ever thought, there's this big gap. It's like, you know, people, I ask people, this, this puzzles me because we never did it with our kids. And I ask people, and if you do it again, I'm not, you know, there's no condemnation. I'm just talking. But I ask people, why, why do you do that? Why do you go one, two, well, the child has to have some time to process what you're trying to tell them. Stop. Train them to understand, Stop. You know, or no, stop. You know, it doesn't take that. It saves their life. They don't have to figure it out and wait. Oh, mom's not to three yet. Right? I mean, they're going to come to a point they have to obey. Either it's one or on three, but there's going to be a point they have to make a decision. Right? Okay. All right, we'll go on. Just relax. It's okay. <laughs> so discipline. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 33, do not be misled or deceived, as the Bible says. Bad company corrupts good character. Wow. Who are they hanging around? Or how about this one? Parents letting them, parents that let their kids feed on ungodly media, ungodly video games. It grieves me to go into Walmart and see a parent buy a four-year-old a mature game. Or a six-year-old or something like that. It's like... Do you know what you're putting in that child? And we wonder. Now, here's what David said. King David wrote uh, this in Psalms 101, 2 through 8. He says this, I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. King James says, I will, not set, any, uh, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. Whoever slanders their neighbor is in secret, excuse me, whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart. I will not tolerate. So in other words, gossip. He's not going to tolerate gossip, right? My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. Friends, who you hang around, right? Important. No one who practices deceit, that's lying, will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I'll put to silence all the wicked in the land. I'll cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. That's David speaking. But the bottom line, you can see he made some decisions who he's going to hang around and what he's going to allow in his life. We're talking about responsibility here. We're talking about making a choice here, about how you live your life as, as, it, as it applies to God's character and what he says life should be like. David said, I'm not going to put up with that. I'm not going to let that interfere with my life. I'm not going to feed on that. I'm making a decision to serve God. 